Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Star Power Baseball from the Cincinnati Razorback Room in beautiful downtown Siloam Springs, Arkansas. I'm your host, Dennis Collier, and I'm with you today on a new episode of Star Power Baseball that's going to talk about some rules. And the rules that we're going to talk about are the rules of the respin. The respin in Star Power Baseball is what separates our game from everybody else's. It's the aspect of Star Power Baseball that allows you to play the game, to make some decisions that can directly affect the outcome of a play that happens on the field. Not only do you get to manage the players, but now you get to mess with the percentages. And that's the beauty of Star Power Baseball. And in this episode, we're going to use two teams that are currently out there, five bucks a piece. We're going to use the greatest season teams this time, and we're going to use the Athletics, and we're going to use the Indians. Both teams, every player on the team has at least one respin. Most of your batters have two, and your pitchers all have four. So we're using maximum respins on a lineup. We're using the designated hitter. These sets that we sell for five bucks a pop on these are 12 players. You get nine position players so that you can use your DH and three pitchers, a righty, a lefty, and a closer. All these teams come with those. Each one is based upon a single season that I deemed the greatest season that that player had with that team. So the lineups are going to be Ricky Henderson with 65 stolen bases in an MVP year, Eddie Collins batting in the 350s, Jimmy Fox with 50-something homers, Al Simmons at 380, Jose Canseco, 40 homers, 40 steals, Reggie Jackson with the 35 homers at the All-Star break, Mickey Cochran's best season with the A's, Sal Bando, the third baseman of the, of the uh, what they call them, the Fightin' A's, I guess. Uh, beautiful team from 72-3-4 era. And Eddie Juice, the walking man, is going to be at second base. Their starting pitcher is going to be Lefty Grove, a 30-game winner. Oh, <laughs> man, what a team. Everybody with respins. But as good as they are, they have to go against the powerhouse of the now Guardians, former Spiders, the former Naps, and the Indians. Leading off will be Shoeless Joe in the best rookie season ever put together, a 408 season, 1911. Napoleon Lajwa, 1901, hit 426. Albert Bell, 50 homers, 50 doubles. Manny Ramirez, being Manny. Hal Trotsky from Norway, Iowa. Al Rosen's great year, I think 1953. Larry Doby's best season. Joe Sewell struck out like six times in the whole year. And Sandy Alomar Jr. doing the catching was Sam McDowell. And uh, the starting pitcher will be Bob Feller for the Indians. So what a ball club. They also have Andrew Miller. And the A's have Dave Stewart and Dennis Eckersley in their bullpen. So what a game this promises to be. And you're going to see it right here live on Star Power Baseball. Getting started right now. We're not going to spin an injury spin, but we are going to take you through the respins, all of the stop action, everything that needs to be done. You can see here are our pips for our pitchers. Each one is a 9-4. That means they have four respins, as you can see there clearly, and an S9. Plus four, that's 13. Bob Feller's the same way. 13 pips, four respins. That's how you keep track. Now, I've got an old school game board that doesn't have the little boxes like your newer game boards do. So I just have to put them where I know where they go. Now that I've introduced everything to you, let's get started. Okay. The Indians are going to lead off with Joe Jackson. He's a sack two, 55 plus. The infield is going to play in at first, in at third. Lefty Grove is going to 
pitch because Jackson says spin the pitcher. Grove's first spin is a minus home run. So if Jackson hits the one, he must respin a mechanical respin. Jackson spins. And let's say 13. That's a single. They will let that ride out. Jackson will take first base. Grove gives up a hit, takes a pip off. Jackson is a 5-5 five, five plus. They'll just use 1-5 to, re to resemble that. Grove's down to 12 pips. As I said, in this game, you're going to see a lot of pitcher fatigue. You're going to see a lot of respins in this game. Okay, minus home run was the first spin. Now we have Napoleon Lajoie. He's a sack 0, 45 plus. They're going to hold on shoeless Joe Jackson. Play back in the infield for double play ball. Shoeless Joe is going to go ahead and try to steal second base off of a Mickey Cochran who is a 5-5. Five five. So I spin the stealing bases card and it says out. Shoeless Joe is out. Caught stealing. See the reaction there. That adds a pip back to Lefty Grove putting him back at 13. Lajoie, Lajoie says spin the pitcher. Grove spins and spins a walk minus, W minus. Lajoie spins with one out and spins a ground ball. The infield is playing back. It's a ground ball. We'll spin the infield card that lands on either E. It's an error. Otherwise, it is a ground out for the second out. Third batter is Albert Bell. He's a sack zero, so he can't do a drag bunt. Lefty Grove spins, minus home run. This is the season Albert Bell had 50 doubles and 50 homers. Spinning Albert Bell, and he spins a nine. That's a walk. You are not allowed to respin a walk by a batter. That takes the pip away once again. He be, he, he's on first base as a 2-4, and that brings up Manny Ramirez, also with two respins. He says the, they, will, they will hold the runner. Grove spins. Spins a G, that's a ground ball. Manny Ramirez will eat it, and that is the third out. I'm not using the respin on Manny in the first inning with just one man on. I would have respun, made Grove respin, had there been a runner in scoring position. I would have made him respin, but I decided not to, putting Grove down to 12 pips with four respins left. Brings up Ricky Henderson, a sack 155 plus. The defense will play back. Feller spins. Spins a B to Ricky. Ricky spins, the leadoff batter for the A's and spins a, mm, boy, that's a tough call right there. I'm going to call it a 1-9 line. On a 1-9 line, I don't know what it's going to look like from up there, but, uh, boy, it's so close. I'm going to call it a 1-9 line. It's just too close to call. And uh, Feller will choose the walk. Uh, Ricky Henderson is going to dispute the call on the field. They're going to use the injury, or as you guys now have the event card, Henderson challenges the call. Because of the lines, they're both right-handed, and so Feller gets to choose a one. Feller can't lose because the worst he can do is spin a one, and so he spins a, an 11. The call on the field stands. Henderson walks. So the replay for the A is gone. But Henderson is on first base. Take a pip off a of feller. Henderson is a 55 plus. Uh, that brings up. He stole 65 bases that year, by the way, and he was the MVP. That brings up Eddie Collins. The Athletics are going to use Ricky to steal a base. Ricky steals. S2A1, he's a 5-5 five, five plus, that's a stolen base. 
off of Sandy Alomar Jr. That puts a runner at second. Eddie Collins is a sack 353. They're going to play in at the corner still. Bob Feller spins. A B for Eddie Collins. Collins spins his card and spins a six ground ball. Eddie Collins is going to use a respin now. First inning, runner in scoring position. Collins doesn't strike out much. A middle grounder might move him over, but I'm playing for a bigger inning with nobody out. Spin him again. He's got two. I'm going to use one. There's a single. The ball is hit to the outfield, and it's hit to the center fielder. Our center fielder is Larry Doby. He's a 4-3. Henderson will try to score. Doby throws the ball to second base. So Ricky scores. Eddie Collins stops at first. He's a 53. And there is a run right off the bat using a respin. A run scored for the Athletics. Take another pip off of, excuse me, not Lefty Grove, off of Bob Feller. Put him down to 11. Collins is on first with Jimmy Fox up. I'm going to hold him on. Collins is not going to run. Spin the pitcher. Feller spins a hit minus. That means if Fox gets a hit, he must re-spin. Jimmy Fox spins a 13. That is a single. Hit minus 13 must be respun. This is a mechanical respin. Spinning the mechanical respin, Jimmy Fox spins an infield pop-up of 14. The runner holds, one out. That brings up the 1930. Al Simmons card. Al hit 381 with 165 RBIs. Holding on the runner, not going to run. Bob Feller spins. Simmons is going to hit. That's a B. Simmons spins and spins a 5. That's a triple. Bob Feller will make him re-spin that triple. With one out and a runner on first, Bob says re-spin the triple. He's got four. He's using one now. Good time to use it on triples. Spinning Simmons for the second time. He spins a 13. <coughs> a single. The ball goes to right field. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to take Collins, and he's going to go to third. The right fielder will throw to second, playing it safe. Simmons will be safe at first. He is a 2-5 plus. That's a 2 Five plus another hit. So Feller started out as an 11. He's, uh, yeah, he's uh, he started out at a 13, 12, 11. He's down to a 10. And Al Simmons is on first as a 2 5 plus. And we have runners at the corners with one down. That brings up Jose Canseco, the first player to have 40 homers and 40 steals in a year. The infield will play hold the runner and second and short at double play depth, third base will be back. Canseco spin the pitcher, Feller spins a B, Canseco spins a 12, that's a ground ball. Canseco has two respins. He's going to use one of them right now. Second respin of the inning for player respin for these guys and look at that it pays off Jose Canseco pops one out of the ballpark for a three run home run so using the respin right there turned out advantageous to the athletics hit run three RBIs for Canseco and the score is four to nothing Feller loses another pip he's down to nine and that brings up Reggie Jackson. Reggie this year had 47 home runs. Again, a plus two. Feller spins. Jackson's no bunt threat. He's a sack zero. That's a B to Reggie. Reggie spins and spins a 9-10 line. And uh, it's either a walk or a strikeout. Jackson gets to pitch, pick because he's a lefty. Feller's a righty. So Jackson gets to make the choice, and Jackson will take the walk. Feller will make him, will not make him respin that. He will accept the walk. 
Second walk given up by Rapid Robert. Jackson is a 3-4. Three, 3-4 four. Three, four on the base. Down another pip, down to 8. And we have Mickey Cochran up. <coughs> Mickey's a sack 1, a plus 2. Respins. Here he goes. We're going to hold the runner on, spin the pitcher. Spinning Rapid Robert, a home run minus to Mickey. Mickey hit 349 in 1931. He spins and spins an infield pop up with two respins. He's going to use one. And he respins that and spins a 13. Another single. This time the ball goes to right field. Jackson will take third. The throw will go to second base, playing it safe. Feller loses another pip. Cochran is a runner 1 0. And I use the 6 for the 0 because it looks like a 0. That's a single. We have runners at first and third with only one out. And that brings up the 1973 two respin dude, Sal Bando. As you can see, I am playing for the big inning right here. I've already gone through three respins on my hitters, three respins in one inning, trying for this big inning. The first inning, the second inning, it doesn't really matter which inning it is. If you get that going, keep it going. And here goes Sal Bando. No running here. Feller spins and spins a K. No respin there. That's a strikeout. You are not allowed to respin a K. And now the final batter, the ninth batter of the inning, coming up for the A's, Eddie Juiced, the shortstop. He's a plus one respin. They'll hold, they won't hold the runner. They'll play behind him. He will not run. Feller spins and gets a B. Eddie Juiced spins and spins a seven. Feller will make him respin that seven, going to his second respin. Juiced respins that seven and spins a walk. That will load the bases. Take another pip off of Feller. Juiced is a 1-3. Feller's down to six pips. The bases are loaded with two outs. And for the second time this inning, Ricky Henderson is up. Infield plays back. Feller spins. Spins an F. That's a fly ball. Ricky has two respins. He's going to make Feller respin that with the bases loaded. Feller respins and spins a hit minus. Ricky is batting right now. Ricky spins and spins a fly ball. Ricky is going to use his second respin. Remember the rules. You cannot respin a respin. Okay? We made Bob Feller respin the F. He respun an H minus. Ricky spun an out. Ricky is using his second respin right now. In the at bat of the game, he is out of respins. And Ricky respins for the second time and spins a six, a ground ball for the third out. So that respin did nothing for him. But in the inning, one, two, three, four athletics cross home plate. So they did have a big inning. Imagine had Ricky got the positive result on that respin. Holy cow. So Feller gets out of that with the other team using, let me see how many respins they did use. Henderson used two, Collins used one, Conseco used one, Cochran used one. They used five player respins, and Feller used two. So in the first inning of the Athletics at bat, seven respins were used in that inning. I hope you're staying up with it and keep tabs on it. Okay, we're with Hal Trotsky now, 1936. Lefty Grove spins, spin the pitcher. Grove spins a B. Hal Trotsky gets the spin, and he spins a fly out. The ball goes to the outfield. They will not use a respin there. One out. As you can see, the Indians are playing a bit more conservative than the Athletics, kind of saving their respins for later use in the game. That brings up Al Rosen. Al is from 1953, 43 homers. He's also got two respins. Spinning the pitcher from... The A's, Lefty Grove, spins a ground ball. They will not make him respin using the save the respins for later. 
Then Rosen grounds out for the second out of the inning. That brings up Larry Doby, a sack one. They'll play deep. Grove spins and spins a B, spin the batter. Doby spins and spins a six. Ground ball up the middle. The ground ball is hit to, or the error spin is not successful. There is no range one infielder there, so that is the third out of the inning. And the Indians go in order. One, two, three, bam. No runs, no hits, nobody left. Grove still with 12 pips, four respins. Feller, two respins with six pips left. They're not even going to get bullpen activity up yet. It's just not time. You're going to see fatigue come into play. It's just inevitable when you're using the greatest players in their greatest seasons. This is what happens when you're using a 1914 Eddie Collins at bat 44. He plays infield in at first and third. Collins will not try to bunt, says spin the pitcher. Feller spins a W. If Eddie Collins does not spin a walk, he must re-spin the card. Collins rocks back and spins and spins an infield pop-up. That's not a walk. This is a mechanical re-spin built into the game. He re-spins and gets a 10. Feller reaches back for a little extra mustard and strikes out Eddie Collins. That brings up the 1932 Jimmy Fox. Had 58 home runs that year. The infield plays normal depth for Fox. Also spins a W. You can see the W is evil. Here we go. It'll take away a home run if he spins a home run. But an infield pop-up is not a walk. Nines are walks. So Fox gets another respin. This is a mechanical respin. And he spins a seven. Feller would love to make him respin that, but you cannot respin a respin. Feller down to five pips. Fox up a 1-0 at first base. That brings up Al Simmons. Simmons has not used a respin yet. You got a runner on first. They'll hold, they won't hold the run, they'll play behind him. Bob Feller rocks, kicks, and fires. Spins a B to Al Simmons. Simmons spins his card and spins a seven single. The ball is hit to pulled. that's over this way. Hit to center field. Center fielder will throw to third. The runner will stop at second base. And we have runners at first and second with one out. Another pip off of Feller. Simmons is a 2-5 plus, as we found out in our last time out. And that brings up Jose Canseco. With runners on first and second and one out. If I get a chance, do you think I should respin Canseco? You make the choice here before I get to kind of call my shot. Feller spins. Spins a B. Canseco is up. What do you think? I've already decided. What have you decided? I have decided that Canseco will use his second respin. Here he goes. The six is a grounder. He spins a second time and spins a fly ball. It's a pulled fly ball to either center or left. It's to center. They'll hold the runner at first. Two outs, and Jose, who hit a three-run homer on a respin last time, is now out of respins. That brings up Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, who still has two respins left. With runners on first and second, once again playing for the big inning. If I need it, do you think I'll use it? Feller spins and spins a hit minus. Here we go. Reggie coming up. Reggie spins and spins a strikeout. It's a moot point because according to the rules of the respin, you cannot respin a strikeout. So Reggie strikes out. The third out of the inning is made. No runs for the Athletics, and the score remains four to nothing in favor of the A's. So we've gotten through two innings, burned some respins, but the Indians have yet to use an offensive player respin. Joe Sewell sacked 322 with two respins. Lefty Grove spins. Lefty spins a G, ground ball. Joe Sewell will eat that. He's not going to respin yet. Uh, ground out. One down. Yet it landed on the E. 
Had it landed on either E, that would have been an error. Next up, Sandy Alomar Jr. Spinning Lefty Grove. He spins a G. Ground ball, Alomar Jr. will not make him respin, and that is the second out of the inning. Now up, Shoeless Joe. They will play in at the corners for Shoeless Joe. Lefty spins, spins a hit, walk minus. Shoeless Joe spins, an eight, that's a fly ball. Not going to use the respins this early in the game, and that's three outs, especially with two outs. With two outs and nobody on, I just don't think it's a wise investment to use a respin to try to get a runner on base with two outs and hope for a two out rally. Just not my style of play. Okay, we've gone through two. It's the bottom of the third. Feller still with four pips and two respins to go. Might be time to start warming up somebody, but I think I'm going to wait just a little bit before I get up another pitcher. Bob Feller pitches to Mickey Cochran. Cochran gets an F. That's a fly ball. Cochran has used one respin. He will not use the second respin yet. That pit goes to the outfield. That's one out. It did not land on the E, so that's an out. Here comes Sal Bando. Feller spins to Bando. Home run minus. Bando spins. Spins a 13. Feller will not make him respin that. Bando gets a single. Okay, so you take Sal Bando. Feller's down to three pips. Bando is a 23. And that brings up Eddie Juiced. Eddie Juiced is up with one man on and one man out. They will hold the runner at first. They say spin the pitcher. Feller spins. Spins a B to Eddie Juiced. Juiced spins a walk. Cannot respin a walk. Look at that. Eddie Juiced, the walking man, walks again. Feller is down to two pips. Juiced is a 1 3. And now they're going to get activity up in the bullpen. They're going to get up Sudden Sam McDowell. Sudden Sam is going to be up right now doing his thing. Sudden Sam gets up the bullpen. He needs 12 spins to be warmed up, and Ricky Henderson is the hitter. Ricky's used both his respins and his lasted back. <coughs> oh, sneezing. <laughs> much, much better. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Ricky's up now with no respins left. Bob Feller spins. Feller spins a B. Ricky does not have the alternate of respin. He spins a 10. A ten. It's actually a 110 line, guys. I'm looking at it real close. And it is a 110 line. The A's have no recourse on this. They've already used their replay option. Feller chooses the 10. Two outs. Fourth strikeout for Feller. That brings up Eddie Collins. Collins is at 353 with two outs. They won't send any runners. Feller spins. Hit minus. Eddie Collins has used one respin so far. He walks. That's not a hit, so it's not a respin. But that loads the bases, my friends. That loads the bases. Takes another pip off of Feller. Collins is a 53. And as you can see, we got traffic. Man, there's just been traffic and traffic and traffic for the A's. And here comes Jimmy Fox. Fox 1932 with 58 home runs and a 364 batting average. Fox has two respins remaining. Feller has two respins remaining with one pick. Feller rocks, kicks, and fires, and spins a K. Respins are moot. It doesn't matter. You cannot respin a K. Fifth strikeout for Bob Feller. And Feller muddles through the third inning. Unscathed, though tried, but not scored upon. And after three innings of play, it is four to nothing. And I'll take it just a second here to say, I hope you're beginning to understand how I use the respins. It's much different when I'm playing another person rather than playing solitaire. When I'm playing solitaire, I kind of play the game. When I'm playing against somebody, 
I play to beat you. Here, I'm letting the teams kind of dictate the game. When I play against you out there in California or Illinois or New York or Texas or wherever you might be, when I'm playing against you, I'm trying to beat you. I'm not trying to beat your team. I'm not, I don't care what team I'm using. I am pitting my wits and my lineup building ability and my, my ability to know the game against your same skills. So right now, I'm just kind of showing you the, the mechanics. We are in the top of the fourth inning. Lefty Grove with four respins, 12 pips left. The Indians have not been able to get anything going yet with this powerful lineup. Let's see if we can get something happening. Lajua is a sack zero. Grove spins. He can't bunt. And spins a home run minus to Lajua. I call him LaJoey. I like that better. Lajua spins an eight as a leadoff hitter. He is going to use a respin. Woohoo! The Indians have decided it's middle of the game. Let's go. That's one of two respins for Lajua. He spins a three. Folks, that is dead center in the middle of the three card. Here we go with the three card. You put it in. We spin it, and it spins to a one four line. A one is between outfielders. It could be an inside the park home run. It's home field advantage. They will take the four. On the four, it says batter hits a shallow looper into the outfield. Spin the outfield card to determine the location of the ball. Okay, so we're going to spin the location. The ball is hit to center field. Spin it again and use the result. The center fielder for the athletics is Jose Canseco. He is a 1-1. One, one. I see A4 batter. He is an A3, LaJoey, an A5 plus batter. A5 plus. So he gets to choose between the M and the A. He's going to take the A. The A gives him a double. So Lajoie, Lajoie, whatever you want to call him, leads off after a respin, pops the three ball, and hits a double. That takes a pip off of Grove. Lajoie, 45 plus, is on second base with nobody out. And that brings up Albert Bell from 1995. They'll play back, Grove spins, and as you can see, I have decided this is the inning right here. I let off and used a respin. Albert Bell's up. Do you think I'm going to use it now with a runner on second and no outs? Here it comes. Albert Bell spins a 12, and the answer is yes, I am going to use one of his two respins. Here he goes with the first one. Boom, a six. That's a ground ball. Up the middle, either second or short. It lands on first base. That means it goes to the first base side. It's a middle grounder fielded by the second baseman. I spin it again, and if it lands on any of the colored results, it will be that. And would you look at that? It lands on the error. It lands on the error. That means he moves up a base. I have an E4. And runners, if anything else, that he's going to just move up. But the E makes it an error. Albert Bell is on at first. A pip is removed. He's a 2-4. So we've burned two respins, and we've got two base runners. Look at that. So the Indians are going for it. We've got Manny Ramirez from 1999. Hit 44 homers and drove in 165. Do you think I'm going to use the respin? What do you think? Here we go. B, spin the batter. Manny Ramirez spins a 13. Grove, is he going to use a respin on a 13, giving him a chance for the 1 or the 11 on Manny Ramirez, or will he just let the run eat? And what he's going to do, what would you do in this situation? Would you make him respin, or would you just eat the run with a 4 to nothing lead? Grove is going to let it eat. He's going to let that happen. The outfield spins. It's an anywhere fly, uh, ball. It's hit to left. The runner will stop at second. The run scores, and Manny Ramirez will go to first base with a base hit. So with nobody out, we've got runners on first and second. It's a hit, 
and that's a run. Ramirez is a 1-0. And that brings up Hal Trotsky. You know where Hal Trotsky's from, guys? He's from Norway, Iowa. If you haven't seen that movie, the, the final season, Hal Trotsky plays a major part in that movie just with his name and name alone as he's from Norway, Iowa. <laughs> there really is in Norway, Iowa. All right, Hal Trotsky's up with runners on first and second and nobody out. He's got two respins. Do you think I'm going to use one now? Spinning Lefty Grove. It's lefty to lefty. That's a ground ball. Trotsky makes Grove respin. He's using it. Grove respins a B. Trotsky spins. Spins a 12, ground ball. He will use his second respin. So Trotsky uses two respins and one at bat and spins a fly ball. The fly ball from Trotsky goes to center field. The runners will hold. That's one out. That brings up Al Rosen from 1953. 43 homers, 145 RBIs. Do you think I'll use his respin? Grove. Spins a hit, walk, minus. Spinning Al Rosen with a hit, walk, minus. Al spins a 14. And the answer is yes, they're going to use his respin. Rosen respins and spins a strikeout, 10. For the second out, and that brings up Larry Doby from 1952. 32 homers, 104 ribbies, plus two respins, and Lefty Grove spins. Grove spins, a home run minus. Larry Doby spins. A 12. Doby will use one of his two respins. And he gets, here it goes, a 9. That's a walk. And the bases are full. Bases loaded. Doby is a 2-4. Bases loaded for Joe Sewell. Sewell also has two respins. Grove has four. Here we go. Spinning. Home run minus. Sewell spins. An 11. Grove makes him respin that. Wouldn't you? Would you? I am. I'm making him respin. I just don't want two runs scoring. Here we go with Sewell. And he spins an infield pop up for the third out of the inning. One run scores. Let's see what we did that inning. We used one, two, three, four, five, six offensive and one pitching respin that inning. And we only scored one run. So as you can see, even though the respins are there and they're very powerful, in this inning it didn't pay like it did in the first inning for the A's. Now here's the situation. Feller's got one pip left and he'll be tired. Sudden Sam, who's been warming up in the bullpen, Sudden Sam's ready to come in. I think what I will do, because we've gotten through three, I'm going to try to get the two respins off of Feller. I've got two respins and one pip left. I'm going to make sure that I use them, so I'm not taking him out of the game yet. I've got Al Simmons from 1930 up. Feller spins. Spins a W. Simmons spins a 14. That's not a walk. He respins and spins a walk. That, my friends, tires out Bob Feller. Simmons is a 2, 5, plus. And now, basically, the Bob Feller card becomes a B. And the W becomes an HW. So not a pleasant thing to do. And we are, even though he's got two respins remaining, we're going to burn it. Turn and burn. Feller's done. And Sudden Sam is coming in the game. Sudden Sam's got 12 res or four respins. And he's got 12 pips because he's an 8-4. So Feller goes three plus innings. And you got in Sudden Sam. I'm writing all this down. 
And I definitely keep tabs on the respins on my score sheet because it's just easier to do. That brings up Jose Canseco holding the runner on, and Jose has used both respins. So sudden Sam throws to Jose and spins a hit and minus. Jose spins. A nine, that's not a hit, that's a walk. Sam McDowell walks Jose Canseco. So he loses a pip. You have a 5-4, Jose Canseco up on first. And that brings up Mr. October, who has not used a respin yet, Reggie. Sam McDowell pitching to Reggie. A B to Reggie Jackson. Reggie spins. An 11. Sudden Sam says, nope, not going to happen. Use a respin. Reggie respins. A 2, a ground ball. The ground ball goes to the second baseman. The second baseman is Lajua. And R5. Lajua is an R5. He's a 2B55. So Lajua gets to choose between the two results, a D or an A. The D is a double play. A is advanced. He's going to take the double play. So that puts him over there. He's out going to second. He's out going to first. Double play. So you have a runner on third. However, that double play takes and puts a pip back because I erased a runner. It puts a pip back on Sudden Sam. So Sam's pretty much where he started. Here we go. That brings up Mickey Cochran. He still has one respin left with the runner on third. McDowell spins, and that's a strikeout. And that's the third out of the inning. No runs. At the end of four innings of play, it's four to one. Now, I'm really, I love using the greatest players in their greatest seasons because you really get to play the game. You really get to use the respins, use the pips, because somebody's going to get tired real, real fast. And there's going to be, pretty soon, I'm not going to have a choice but to leave that pitcher in. Grove is sailing right now, guys. Here comes Alomar Jr. Lefty Grove spins. Alomar Jr. gets a hit walk minus. Alomar Jr. spins. And that's a home run. Well, you don't respin a home run unless it's a mechanical respin. Hit or walk, respin. Home run's a hit. Respin that home run. Sandy Alomar Jr. And he spins a 13. That is a single. Grove is saying, well, I like making respin that. And he's going, well, you can't respin a respin. So you get a pip off of Grove. He's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Put a six out there for a zero. That brings up Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe, 1911, set a rookie record at 408 batting average, which will never be touched. The runner's not being held. Spin the pitcher, lefty to lefty. Grove spins a B. Shoeless Joe steps in the box. Grove pitches, spins, and gets a 13. Single. Grove will let it ride. The single goes to right field. Alomar will stop at second, so no throw is made. Shoeless Joe, singling, taking a pip off of lefty. Shoeless Joe is a 5-5 plus, and that brings up Napoleon Lajoie. With runners on first and second. Lajoie's used one respin. You think he'll use one now? Grove spins. A B. Lajua spins. A 13. Is Grove going to use his respin now? Yes, he is. He's going to use a respin and make that 426 Lajoy spin again. And he spins an infield pop up. Great call right there for Lefty Grove. Two outs. Now you have Albert Bell. 1995. Lefty Grove spins. Bell has used one respin. He has one left. That's a ground ball. Bell will eat it. He's not going to make him respin that ground out. So we'll see who it's to. The ground ball is hit to the second baseman. All right. At second base, you have 
Eddie Kahn's a 5-3-F. That means this runner is forced at second, he goes to third, and Albert Bell is safe at first. So we get a fielder's choice. I put out by there, and we have runners at first and third. No pips lost because no additional runners get to the base. Manny Ramirez with no respins used. He's got two remaining. Lefty Grove spins. A B to Manny. Manny spins and spins a nine. That's a walk and the bases are loaded with Indians. Third walk given up by Grove. Manny's a 1-0. So now you see the bases are loaded. Bases loaded, full of Indians. Hal Trotsky burned both of his respins last time. So here's Grove. Grove spins, a B. Trotsky. Bam! What's he going to do? Seven single. Grove will make him respin that down to his final respin. Trotsky spins and gets a four. Lefty to lefty, so it's going to be a four for the third out. No runs. No runs. Pitching well this game. Both teams pitching well. Controlling. Controlling the other very well. Okay, we're in the bottom of the fifth, and it is Sal Bando time. Sal Bando has uh, not used one of his two respins yet from 1973. Here goes McDowell. A hit minus to Sal Bando. Bando spins. A strikeout. Second strikeout for McDowell. Here comes Eddie Juice, the man of one respin. Sam spins. The walk, the W, the spin, not a walk, gets to respin. Respins it and walks. Juiced has now walked all three times he has been up to bat. Takes a pip off of Sam. Juiced is a 1 3, as we're getting to know. And that brings up Ricky, who's used both of his respins, holding the runner. Sam McDowell spins in this 4-1 to one game. Spins a B to Ricky. And Ricky spins a 9. That's a walk and we can't re-spin a walk. It's on the rules of the re-spin. Third walk for Sudden Sam. And Ricky's a 5-5 five, five plus. Takes another pip off of Sudden Sam. He's down to 10. And that brings up Eddie Collins, who's used one of his two respins. And we're going to play in at the corners for Eddie. Sam spins and spins a B to Eddie. You think I'll use his respin if he doesn't get it? Here he goes. 12. The answer is yes. Collins uses his second respin. There it is. Seven is a single to the outfield, pulled to this side over here. It's to the center fielder. They're going to send Sal or Eddie Juiced is going to run. The throw is going to go to home. They're going to try to throw home. Here he goes. The ball's hit to the center fielder. Center fielder is Doby, a 43. R5, he is not. That is an A. That means everybody advances two bases, including the batter runner. Misses the cutoff man. Doby makes a bad throw, puts runners at second and third. Another pip off of Sudden Sam. Boom, 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 boom. And Eddie Collins is at 5 3. At second base with one out. That brings up Jimmy Fox, who has not used a respin. 1932 58 homer guy. The infield is playing in, 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 short in. Everybody on the grass. Here we go. Sudden Sam picks a B. Picks a B. Jimmy Fox spins. He's going to use a respin if he needs it. You bet he is. Spinning Jimmy Fox. And that's out of here. That's a home run. Just inside the one. And that's three more runs crossing the plate for the powerful team 
athletics. Wow. Well, on a respin, takes him down to eight. And the score is now eight to one. Brings up Al Simmons with two respins. Do you think I'll use one if needed right here? Hit minus for Al. Do you think? Well, it's a mechanical respin. I must respin the hit. Here he goes. Second spin, he gets a 12. Ground ball oppo. The grounder is not an error, so that's two away. Jose Canseco has no respins remaining. Spinning Sudden Sam, this is a minus home run. Canseco spins, a walk. You're beginning to see what the true outcomes are and why they play this way in today's game. The walks will kill you. You have no control over them. They just destroy your pitching, they destroy your team, they destroy the game. But that's how it's always been. The old saying, oh, those bases on balls. Yes, indeed. Reggie Jackson up, has not used a respin yet. Jose Canseco, they'll hold him on. Here goes Sam McDowell. Hit minus. Reggie spins. Eight is a fly ball. Reggie will use one of his two respins. He spins the second spin and gets a six ground ball for the third out. But the Athletics put a four spot on the board. At the end of five innings of play, the score is eight to one Athletics. Grove is still in with six pips and one respin left, but the Athletics are gonna get up another pitcher. They're gonna get up Dave Stewart in the bullpen. Al Rosen is the batter who's used one respin. Grove spins. Al Rosen is up. A hit walk minus. Rosen spins a 12. That's a ground ball. He's going to eat that ground ball. The grounder is not an error, so that is one out. Doby's up. He's used one of his two respins. A home run minus. That's what he got last time, remember? And Doby spun a home run. This time he spins a four. He will not re-spin that. And he is out for the second out. Notice that I'm spinning this. If it lands on the E, it's an error. Other than that, he's out. That's called the error spin. Joe Sewell is up. Spinning the pitcher. Hit walk minus. That's why Lefty Grove was so evil. Spinning Joe Sewell. Sewell spins an eight. That's a fly ball. And that's the third out of the inning. They go down in order of one, two, three. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We're through five and a half. And the score is eight to one. They're going to leave lefty in. Yeah, lefty's pitching well. McDowell's still in the game. Pitching the bottom to Mickey Cochran, who's used one of his two respins. McDowell spins a W to Mickey Cochran. Cochran spins and spins a 14. That's a fly out in the infield, a pop-up. One out. Salbando, who has not used one of his two respins yet. He still has two left. Bando spins. Spins a two. Ground ball. He will not use them right now. Spinning and out for the second out. And Eddie Juiced is up. Juiced gets, he's used, not, he's not used his only respin. He spins now on a home run minus and spins a fourth walk. The walking man has now walked four times. Lose a pip, gain a runner. Ricky Henderson's up, who's used both his respins. Henderson spins, or McDowell spins a B. Henderson gets up and spins a home run. The A's are just playing home run derby with the Indians pitching staff. Second home run given up by McDowell. Another pip off of him. That brings up Eddie Collins, who's used both of his respins. 
and he gets a K, that's a strikeout. Third strikeout, two run score, and it's 10 to 1. They're going to leave Grove in. Let's see if Grove can do more damage, man. Let's check him out. He's still got six pips left and one respin. I'm using him to his maximum ability, guys. I'm using it to the max. Alomar Jr. with one respin. Grove up and throwing. A B to Alomar Jr. Will he use his respin if he fails? He walks. Will Grove use his second respin? The answer is no, he will not. I mean, his last respin, the answer is no. He's going to take the walk. Fourth walk he's issued. Alomar, not a fast runner. Plugs up the bases like last time. We set up the double play of Jackson gets on. That's why we didn't make him respin. He's slow, so I didn't make him respin anything. And I couldn't anyway. It's a walk. Can't respin a walk. Lefty Grove. Spinning a home run minus to Shoeless Joe. Shoeless Joe spins a seven. He's got a respin. It's a single to here. It could be first and third. They're not going to run him. They're going to eat the single. That gets the pitcher, and he stops at second. That gets the pitcher, Dave Stewart, warmed up. He is warm. 55 plus for Jackson. That brings up Lajua. Lash was used one respin. He has one left. Here we go. Lefty Grove. Will I use Lajua's second respin now or do I save it? The answer is no. I use it right now. Grove spins. A home run minus to Lajua. Triple crown winner in 1901. 426 hitter. And he spins an infield pop up. Without a respin, he's out. That brings up Albert Bell with one out and first and second. Spinning the pitcher. Albert's up. A B. A B to Bell. Bong bong. Spinning Albert Bell. He spins a two. He will use his second respin. Spinning Albert Bell and he gets a seven. Single. Goes to the outfield. It goes to center field. That's Jose Canseco. He's a 1-1. Uh, they will play it safe and throw to third base. The runner will stop at second. Bell will take first base. He's a 2-4. And a run will score. Runners at first and second with one out. And it's now 10-2. Pip. There you go. Manny Ramirez is up. Has yet to use a respin. Grove spins. B. Will Manny use one right now? If you were using him, would you use one right now? That's a single. Will Grove make Manny respin that with a 10 to 2 lead? The answer is no, he won't. He doesn't want to take a chance on that long ball. The ball is hit to right field. They'll throw to second base. This runner goes to third. Manny goes to first. And a pip comes off of lefty. I told you you were going to see some fatigue coming up soon. We'll see what happens. Another run scores. We have runners at first and third with one out for Hal Trotsky. Hal's used both of his respins, and that's why Grove didn't use his. He can use them both. He can use his respin against Trotsky. Trotsky spins. Spins a 14. That's an infield pop-up. For the second out, that brings up Al Rosen, who has one respin remaining. Grove spins and spins a G. Rosen will make him respin that, burning his final respin. Grove spins and home run minus. Rosen with no respins left. Spins an 8. That's a fly out. And the third out of the inning is made, but two runs cross. And after six and a half, it's the A's 10, the Indians 3. Okay. McDowell still in with five pips and three respins. Grove still three pips and one respin left. He's trying for the whole potato right here. Jimmy Fox is up against Sudden Sam. 
Fox has used one of his two respins. Won't get a chance to use one on that K spun by Sudden Sam. Fox did hit a home run his last time up. Brings up Al Simmons, who has not used a respin yet. Minus home run. A seven single. <coughs> McDowell will not make him respin that in fear of the extra base hit. He will eat the single. Simmons is on. Lose a pip here. 25 plus. Jose Canseco, who's used both respins, hold the runner on first. Home run minus. No respin for Jose. Spinning. Two ground ball. Ground ball pulled. It'll be over here. The ball's hit to the shortstop. The ball hit to the shortstop, who is Joe Sewell, is a 1 4. P4 it is not. He's a P1. That will advance the runner to second base. He'll choose the A. This team wins, they choose the A. So you have a ground out, throws to first, cannot do anything with the runner in second. Brings up Reggie. He's used one of his two respins, but not a chance to use one there. Sam McDowell spins the K, and you do not get to respin the K. At the end of seven, the score is still 10 to 3. Okay. The Indians will get Andrew Miller up in the bullpen, and the A's will get up Eckersley. So both bullpens are rounding up and hot. Larry Doby is up, who's used one of his two respins. Lefty Grove is staying in the game. Hit walk minus. Doby spins. A hit has to respin. Mechanical respin. What a card. Two ground ball. The ground ball is an out. That's an error spin with nobody on base. We spin the error spin. One down. Joe Sewell. Hit walk minus. The mechanical respins are what's winning the game for them. Ground ball. Sewell has two respins. He's going to use one of them right now. Spinning again for Joe Sewell. He spins a walk. Fifth walk ended up by Lefty Grove. Sewell is a 22. You saw we took the pip off. He's down to two with one respin. Sandy Alomar Jr. has a respin remaining. Will he use it on this spin? Let's see what Grove does. Home run minus to Sandy Jr. Jr. spins a double. Grove will use his final respin. Spinning Sandy Alomar Jr. again, and he spins an eight fly out for the second out. Well done, Lefty. Are you going to leave Lefty in? Shoeless Joe with two respins. Lefty still has all of his card. Mechanical respins built in. Ground ball fly out. I'm going to go one more shot with him. Here he goes. He spins an F. Shoeless Joe makes him respin that F. He respins the F and gets a home run minus. Shoeless Joe spins. An eight. He will use his respin. Second respin for Shoeless Joe of the at bat. And a four is a fly out. And the inning ends. Three outs. The Indians, no damage. At the end of seven and a half, it's ten to three. Sudden Sam stays in the game. I'd love to use the Miller card, but I don't need it. And if I do get some runs in the ninth, I'm going to have to use him. So here we go with Mickey Cochran. Cochran has used one respin. That's an F. He's going to use his second respin right now. We don't leave respins on the table if we can. Hit minus. Mickey Cochran will have to accept whatever result this is. 14 is an infield pop-up. One down. Sal Bando has not used a respin yet. Hit minus for Sal Bando. Bando spins and gets an 11-8 line. Righty, lefty. Righty gets to choose the 11 over the 8. Okay. Bando will choose the 11. McDowell will, they'll use their instant replay right now. So you got replay. 
Indians. The A's lost their only attempt at instant replay. The Indians are using theirs right now. Spinning the event card. What number does it come up? A seven. So now they have to spin a seven or higher. They spin a seven. So McDowell challenged, fails, the call on the field stands. It is a double. Okay, he used that. The call on the field stands. Because he used the replay on the, the first one, it makes it a hit. He can now use the respin. Make him respin. Sal Bando must respin. It was vitally important that I did it in that order so that I could do that play. Okay, now, here's where the controversy comes in because the rule of the respin says that you must use the respin before any other play is made. So that is a moot point. We are not, we are overruling our own ruling on the field right there. It is a double for Sal Bando because I did that. I didn't ask for the respin before the next play. So it is a double for Sal Bando. The call on the field stands. I am overruled on my own rule. As you can see in the rules of the respin, when you look at it in your rule book, you must declare the respin before any other play is made. And I did not do that. So I cannot use a respin on that play. That's the way it is. Don't get to keep going and going and going. Okay. Eddie Juice, who has not used a respin yet. Sam McDowell spins. W. That's a, anything but a walk. Respin it. Juice spins a 14. Not a walk. He must respin. Spins a 7. Goes to the outfield. Goes to right field. The right fielder is Albert Bell at 22. They're going to try for the play at the plate. Here he goes. He's a 22. R4. He is not. That would be an A. That's This team will choose either A or X. They're going to choose A. He scores. And Eddie Juice to 1-3. will take second base on the throw. Another run scores for the Athletics. Another pip off of him. Juiced is on. Brings up Ricky Henderson. Henderson has no more respins left. And that's Sudden Sam spinning to Ricky. Strikes him out. Two away. That brings up Eddie Collins. Collins has used both of his respins. A W to Eddie. Eddie spins. A three, Sudden Sam, they're not a three, a 13. A 13. Sudden Sam will make him respin that. Eddie respins. A nine. And we have runners on first and second. Okay, a five, three for Collins. Down to one pip for McDowell. Jimmy Fox is up with one respin remaining for Fox, but it's a moot point. Because you cannot respin a K. So they score one, and we go into the ninth inning with a score of 11, <coughs> 11 to 3. And Groves trying for the complete game. Boy, would I be busted out on this or not, you know? I'd be busted out on this if I was managing in the big leagues, but I like that lefty Grove card. I like this part of the card that seems to be landing up there a lot, and he's still got two pips left. I'm facing the Joey with no pips left. I mean, no respins left. There's a bead in Napoleon. Here we go. Eight. That's a fly ball. Grove gets him out. Almost an error, but not quite. One down. Albert Bell's used both of his respins. Hit walk minus. That's why I like that card. That card is nice. Albert Bell spins. Hit walk minus. Right in the middle of the home run, but if it's a hit or a walk, he respins. He's a nine-inning pitcher. He's got two pips left. He's not tired. Have to respin Albert Bell. Spinning Bell, and he spins a four. Fly ball. Fly ball. 
two outs. Okay, and the third spin comes in. The third spin, here we go. Hit walk minus to Ramirez. Ramirez has both respins left. Spins a 12. He'll use one of his respins. Spins again. Spins a 7. That's a single. That's the third hit for Manny. Ninth hit given up by Lefty. One pip left for Lefty Grove. Manny is a 1 0. And that brings up Hal Trotsky, who's used both of his respins. Grove spins again. Spins an F. Have no recourse but to eat it. That is a fly out. And my friends, this ball game is over. Final score, third, or excuse me, 11 to 3 in favor of the A's. Winning pitcher going the distance, Lefty Grove. Losing pitcher, having pitched three plus innings, is Bob Feller. McDowell goes five, and no runs there. Final score, 11 to three. Ball game is done. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about this in our post game. How'd you like it? Loved it, life's good, move on. Oh, wow, what a ball game. I mean to tell you, we used everything we could from both teams. The score turned out a little bit lopsided at 11 to 3, but there were never any clear moments of runaway. I mean, it was in doubt. There was things that could have happened the whole time. We used, let's see, for the Indians, we used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. We used 13 of their respins on the offensive part of the ball. And Lefty Grove was so dominant in this game with the mechanical respins, the mechanical respins just stopped the Indians from using their respins in prime time. The, the, the mechanical respins of Lefty Grove with that walk hit minus, that home run minus was just devastating to the Indians. It was amazing how well they did. On the other hand, the A's used two, four, six, eight, nine, ten respins. And a lot of their respins didn't get used because the pitchers for the Indians kept spinning the K. McDowell had seven strikeouts, Feller had five, and spinning the K stops the respin. It stopped it. So the mechanical respins, as well as the player respins, we used over 40, no, over 30 respins this game, counting pitcher respins. And, and, and if you include mechanical respins, we probably used close to 50 respins in this game, and it still only took about 45 minutes to play. As you get better with this game, as you get better and play more and play more and play more, you're going to find that it just flows quickly, quickly, quickly. Now, here's something that I want to tell you. As you play solitaire with this, the respins aren't as big a deal as if you play against a friend. If you're playing against somebody, man to man, woman to woman, man to man, if you're playing person to person with this game, on the phone, online, on Zoom, whatever, and you're playing person to person, it's a whole different world. Because I am no longer seeing which team's better. I'm seeing if I play the game better than you do. That's what's so fun. When you play Catechol Baseball, when you play Stratomatic Baseball, APBA Baseball, time all the other games, you're playing the lineup versus the lineup that you made, and there's your decisions, and you're done. As you saw many times in this game, do I use my respin now, or do I save it? What is my strategy gonna be? And it's all about changing the odds. I get to change the odds in this game. I get to play. That's so much fun, and the score still comes out the way it's supposed to. You know, we had a big inning in the first, we had a big inning in the fifth, with a couple of bombs and, and, and some, you know, three-run homers, and, 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 and you can't help that when that happens. The Indians had home runs taken away. They had them taken away from them with, with Lefty Grove's home run minus. Shows you how, how dominating that that dude was in the 1930s. He was so good. And I'm telling you, you know, you look at those cards, those four respins, all the pips. Grove pitched 
a complete game, guys, against the greatest players the Indians ever have. You're talking about Manny Ramirez and Larry Doby and, and Albert Bell and Nap Lajoie and, and, and Eddie, you know, all those amazing players. And Grove throws a complete game <clears throat> in his best season with the A's. I mean, guys, think about how, how fun that this can be. Now, if you, if you like what you saw, please like us on, on this channel here on the YouTube channel and subscribe if you haven't. If you're not a member of our group on Facebook, by all means, please join our group. I'm going to give you the answer to the questions. First of all, the inventor of all-star baseball, category baseball, is Ethan Allen. Boom. Done. The end. The Hall of Fame's in Cooperstown, New York, guys. Come on. It's in Cooperstown. You all know that. Answer the questions. I'll accept you as a member. Let's move on from that. Email me at warhammerworld at hotmail.com. You saw these cards. Two teams, 12 players each, greatest seasons, fantastic to play. We've got a whole bunch of them. There's over, over I think there's 18 out right now, 17 or 18 of the greatest teams that are <coughs> on the market right now. They're five bucks a piece. I mail them to you. You get them in just a couple of days. PayPal, however you want to pay. Send me a check. Send me a $5 bill. Whatever you want to do. My name is Dennis. I'm the co-inventor of Star Power Baseball. My son Gentry is the other one. He's got his own video channel on YouTube where he examines a lot of the all-time great players. Jen Trova, check him out. And feel free to leave comments on this. We encourage you to leave comments. I had a ball coming here and playing the game for you guys. I hope I answered a lot of your questions about respins, about pitcher fatigue, about how this works. We didn't get to pitch fatigue, but you saw me kept moving the pips, moving the pips, moving the pips. We didn't get anybody tired, but we tried. Not for lack of trying. Anyway, guys, so much fun. You get to play. It's Star Power Baseball, the greatest tabletop baseball game ever invented, bar none. And you saw it live right here on this channel. Please subscribe, like us, and hey, the spin is in all the time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Star Power Baseball.